It's me, Mario. All right, so welcome back to another new video. Uh, I decided this time I was gonna do a top 10 things I wish I knew list when I was creating my very first RPG Maker game. Uh, wow, it's been, I'd say, six months. I started the game in October and I just kept writing uh, and programming the game every single day, like maybe four or five hours a day. Uh, sometimes I'd be up till 4 a.m. Even though I had a concept and a goal in mind which basically saved this project from uh, total annihilation, there were a lot of setbacks and that's what I want to bring with you guys today. So uh, grab a pencil and paper, break out a notepad and you know do whatever it is you gotta do because um, uh, yeah this this list is from someone that's 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 been right through it so I'll, I'll put a, a, a brief title under each section of uh, RPG Maker that uh, I found was difficult. So anyways, let's get right into the list. Uh, title number one. So, building a video game is like a long-term relationship. I, yeah, possibly marriage. Um, when I say that, I mean like, okay, it's gonna last at least six months, right? There's gonna be lots of fights. Uh, you're gonna argue over who's right and who's wrong with coding. Um, sometimes you're gonna want to take breaks. Uh, sometimes things don't work out and you need a um, time to organize your thoughts and present your arguments clearly with each other. Just keep that in mind that you're going to run into problems and it might be best to prepare for those problems. Number two, organize your code and switches. Holy moly. Or just be prepared to move it around and destroy your game in the process. Wow, um, this is such an important point and you'll notice that uh, very quickly, RPG Maker, you can't cut and paste your, your codes or your switches and then are like, where did it go? Where did it go? I was trying to organize it and now that switch or code is blank. Think about this in advance. If you're gonna have lots of switches for one area, just just open the damn thing and just say there's gonna be a, a thousand uh, switches rather than just, you know, your first hundred. Just say there's gonna be a thousand and then for one section, you're gonna have uh, this area and all the switches that could be in this area. So you'll say 100 switches for one area. Uh, I like to add dashes or little blank lines that can cut against uh, the other switches and um, it'll, it'll separate the two. So that's just a nifty little cool idea. Anyways, moving on to number three. Write out the game's dialogue and plot first. Yes, uh, that'll give you a scope of how big your game is gonna be. And uh, even my first game, which was a tutorial game, there was no uh, script or dialogue and it was kind of just filled with, you know, fluff pieces and characters. At least have um, an idea of how long the tutorial is gonna be or how long this is going to be and map out that that uh, how big the plot is going to be and beginning middle and end um, you are writing a visual book uh, so all these things you'll want to you want to prepare for in advance be your own screenwriter and just just do that uh, prepare 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 on to number four <laughs> draw out as many maps as you can and th think of uh, some some uh, while you're going along. I love drawing maps and it was one of my most favorite things about uh, building a game. There is no such thing as too many maps. There is no such thing as too many areas. You can do unlimited, just go for it. Um, you can certainly make a big map, which is what I, I wanted, and then have all the little little details speckled about it. Uh, that's commonplace. But get those creative juices flowing. Just make as many uh, different worlds as you can. And if you don't need them, then delete them. But at least that idea is there and you uh, might come back to it later. So even before you, I would say, begin the game, uh, yeah, 
build that dialogue and, and, uh, and game narrative, sorry, and on top of that, as many maps. Game narrative maps. Just go for that. Okay, now on to number five, which is be prepared for constant beta testing. Oh my god. There, I could say so many things on this matter. Uh, beta testing, it, it'll tie in very much like a long-term relationship. Uh, I noticed in RPG Maker 2003 that even though you're making the, the game and you're constantly updating it, I, I haven't found that this where I save or the save states that I have will upload the new information. Perhaps that's because RPG Maker 2003 is so old and it's a bit of a like an urgh, you know, so um, just be prepared for that. Know that you're going to want to, you know, pause the game, start it again, and just go over something very briefly. And it's like, oh, that works, that doesn't work, that works, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And you're going to do it uh, maybe 10, 20 times for one thing. Um, I remember in my new game, the, the, the Expelton game, I was creating those arrows, the dodge and drop arrows, I had to shoot them from one side, and they had to resume their location, so they had to become invisible, reset to the same location, and then fire again. And that took a whole bunch of testing. I, I figured, oh, I'm never going to figure this out, but it's, it's much better when you just beta test and beta test and beta test, and you gather these new uh, tips and tricks that you can figure out uh, logistically in, in workarounds. And I found that, you know, just just be prepared. So. All right, now on to number six, which is don't leave the soundtrack writing until the end. Um, I'm foremost a composer, but if you can't write music, hire someone early. Don't leave anything until the end, uh, because you might have, you know, tastes and changes that you. Hat, or, or you had stuff from the beginning that works here and there and if you write it all at the end you might even just become uninspired by the end and that also is number seven self-explanatory don't leave the artwork and sprites until the end uh, if you can't make art art hire someone early uh, for this game i didn't have anyone to make the art and i figured okay these are my first games i'll just use the art that's that's given to me but of course, I, I don't want to do that for the next game because I'll have used all the art that uh, RPG Maker has to offer. So I want my game to be as unique as your game and your game is unique, etc, etc. So uh, on those two notes, if you're doing six or, or number six and number seven uh, and holding them off, uh, Maybe it's time to learn a new skill, uh, you, and that's that's what I decided to do. I have to learn how to create games and programming. Maybe it's time to pick up how to create uh, a soundtrack. Completely optional, but hey, it's up to you. All right. So moving on to number eight, which is make a day planner and what you want to tackle every day. Yes, that this is this is headlines right here. Have a deadline that you can meet and sketch out every part of your project. Day planner deadlines. Day planner deadlines. I could say that a hundred times. So, let's say you want to complete uh, the the uh, big cut scene, and you have one week to do it, and you want it done by then because you want to release your game in hopes that it could make some profit in sales. You want to do that by this, and then you want to can you want to finish the for or you can you can even make a game like a chapter game like this is chapter one chapter two chapter three it's been done before um so you want chapter one done by this uh and uh day planner you might also sketch out okay maybe my my game requires some voice acting where am i going to hire voice actors can i do voices can i record uh my own voice is it going to work for this this and this or do I need to hire? Um, all these things you should be thinking about and putting in a day planner. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually attach to this video a checklist of, of things you can uh, 
add to your game or anything that could be missing that you didn't think about and that I didn't think about until the end and I was like, oh, shoot. So, yes, that. Um, Alright, so that's number eight. Number nine uh, is double check your work and create a commentary run through before release. Yes, double check your work, double check it. And commentary. Um, I, I have a semi embarrassing co commentary because I figured my game was uh, complete or to the best of my abilities. And I start playing my game finally, uh, Exvelton, playing it finally thinking, hey, uh, everything's done, everything's good, I've been at this, you know, double checking for the last six months, I'm ready, and I start playing it, I'm having a great time, but then I notice, oh, well, some of the, the animals are in the snack track, which is, I let them just run randomly, but I don't want them to be in the, uh, the line of my, um, my pathway that I built, so I have to deter the animals or there was you know a couple of things where I was like I can't get into a building or there was uh, the, um, the, the the sprite or the, the sprites were passable so my character could walk over mountains or that kind of thing so you want to double check that and just play it as if you know uh, it's just a, a good time you're having a good time and you're just uh, having fun and just find that when I release my game, even though I've, I've fixed my double checkings mistakes, I'm going to have someone come back and say, there's a bug here, there's a bug there. Uh, you want to give it your best and, and look your best, so that that's my number nine. And finally, the most important, number ten. <laughs> Make smaller games first, please! Uh... <laughs> I learned this the hard way. I kind of just wanted to go after my dream game, and I'm going to tell you that building this uh, nearly broke me. Um, it's just rare to see someone have that kind of willpower to go through it the first time and just, you know, crush it. It's just like, don't think that it's going to be like that for everybody so don't do what I did and make this huge RPG game because even though I've made it there's still gonna be something missing or something that I can improve upon I don't I don't know it but there's gonna be something that is uh, broken in the game I'm, I'm almost certain start off by making like a very small single level side scroller or uh, there, I, I had posted some earlier games I made when I was like a kid and they were just small, like uh, Frogger is just like a one window kind of small base game. Don't make games that are 30 minutes to two hours. Um, if you think about big titles, a uh, hundred or 200 people uh, made that game. If you're planning on making the next Super Mario Brothers 64, by yourself, that is a bit of a lofty goal and maybe a bit of a reality check that that might take you five years, ten years, because you're doing what 100 to 200 people did in six months. So give yourself a pat on the back and say, you know, wow, I, I, I really did this by myself. That's in insane. It's